Well, Morphin Squad, we finally did it. We have finally hit over a thousand likes and over a thousand followers here on Facebook.com. Well, honestly, we cannot thank you guys enough for your love and support that has driven us for these past few months. I know we were, we we're, we've been on here not too long, but the fact that you guys these have stuck with us and support us through thick and thin, honestly, I can honestly speak for the rest of us here at Morphin Network when I say we didn't think we could get this far, but thank you guys so, so much. Um, this honestly has been a, one of the most humbling experiences I have ever had, and I've only, I've been doing this, I've been doing podcasts for over a year now, and I've been helping out with Ryan and Clement for as long as I can remember, over a, only a year, and I've known Ryan, and I've known Clement for longer than that. I met Ryan during my sophomore year at um, in college, and then I met uh, Clement right afterwards. And well, y'all know how me and Jen are. I've known Jen for almost ten years now. So, and as well, Sean, I've only known for quite a while now. But other than that, yeah, guys, there really, honestly, there is no possible. There really is no other way I can thank you guys. Like, there really is no other way we can thank you guys. I, I honestly don't know how we can thank you. And hold on, give me one second. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, Ryan. How, wait, how are you? Are you are you outside my window? Wait. How, okay. Wait. How how can we thank these people? Okay. They, I mean, look. They they've been supporting us for months. There really is no other way we can. Really. We. We can do that. For. Oh yeah! Of course. Of course! Before we get started, in case you guys want to know what, how I'm going to explain this, I'm going to talk to myself, about myself, in third person. So, when I say the name Psycho Fox, I'm not just talking about me, I'm talking about the character that I am playing. Considering the fact that this is kind of a sketch series that we've been doing for a while. So, myself is a character in that show so i'm going to be relating to myself in third person as i discuss what's been going on but with that being said let's get started with phase one phase one of pocket dimension was very 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 simple to do in a sense where it was just nothing more than a spoof we were just doing a spoof in honor of power ranger shadow Grade, which was the big power ranger comic book event that was going on that was tying the gaps between the modern day version of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, along with every other season of Power Rangers in the past 25 years, from Mighty Morphin all the way to Ninja Steel, um, in the sense where they were all supposed to, be, all the Rangers are going to come together to fight Lord Draken, who, which was Tommy Oliver's evil doppelganger. After Lord Draken shattered the grid, meaning separating the timeline of Power Rangers and making the the seasons their own universe and stuff like that. As well as killing the Time Force Rangers, except Jen. Jen still survived. And killing our Tommy, our world's Tommy, in the process. And you see the moment where Tommy dies in Kimberly's arms. It's one of the most tragic deaths in comic book history. But with that being said, Jen Pink, Psycho Fox, and it's going to be really weird talking about myself in third person, and Red Star decided to review issue 25. Dagger Boy is not there. So they can go on with... Go continue the show without him until uh, some unknown assailant called Shadow Dagger attacks them uh, and warns them stop reviewing the Shadow Dagger comic books or you will be destroyed. In the process has of recuperating from his um injuries of being stabbed, which he does get stabbed a couple more times because it's become the running gag of Phase One. Psycho Fox finds Dagger Boy's phone outside the library where he works at and tells the others and. She that Dagger Boy left a message saying that in order to find him, you need to find his red energy and get his Dragon Dagger back from Shadow Dagger because Shadow Dagger will stab Psycho Fox with his dagger, you know. Chekhov's gun! <laughs> a crispy clean employee, because apparently they deliver now, gives a dozen donuts to the trio and then they find Dagger Boy's energy inside 
the box. They try asking him for questions, but they find out that he died moments afterwards. Later on, the trio who decide to look along with BP, because BP is still around, they try looking for uh, Dagger Boy throughout the campus, throughout their homes, just throughout the entire LA area. What? Bro, what are you talking about? Where's Dagger Boy? Where is he? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can find him tomorrow. I mean, we're gonna record anyway. Turn off the lights, too bright. Then, all of a sudden, during um, a title fight for the now vacant Morphin Network title, Shadow Dagger makes an appearance, attacking BP and Red Star, which Red Star was the champion defending the Morphin Network title, and BP was moments away from winning the Morphin Network title, attacks the three of them, takes the belt, and tries to get away. Psycho Fox manages to go into the pocket dimension with Shadow Dagger and takes the dimensional sword back with him, grabs BP and Red Star, and take and all three of them go to the pocket dimension, leaving Gen Pink on Earth. And well, this happened. As the trio uh, looked for Dagger Boy in the pocket dimension, Jen was the only one left. So she made a call to our friends at Weed Geeks East LA and Angel Grove Radio to try and find Dagger Boy. Unfortunately, they couldn't find him. Meanwhile, in the pocket dimension, we find out that Dagger Boy is in some throne room where Lord Shadow Dagger is supposed to be, along with something else. It is what look, appears to be in a machine that's reading something. We don't know until later on, which we will get into for Phase 3, because that will be set in Phase 3. In the middle of all of them uh, trying to find uh, Dagger Boy, BP manages to find a USB device that has the pl some unknown plan or unknown plot that Lord Shadow Dagger is plotting. And also in the process, Red Star gets clobbered, and we don't see him for another cool minute. On the next episode, where we reviewed uh, issue 26 as of Power Rangers Shatter Grid, Grid, Jen, along with Danny from Weedies East LA, review issue 26 until a, a dimensional portal opened up and Psycho Fox, BP, along with Dagger Boy, come from the pocket dimension safely. Dagger Boy manages to tell him what he saw and what happened, and we and we finally realize why he went missing and why he was attacked. Apparently, we had a troll, and Dagger Boy went to confront this troll, and the process got sucked into the pocket dimension. This is why you do not answer troll emails, people, because you will get thrown into another dimension and quite possibly brainwashed. In the finale of Phase 1, we see that Dagger Boy and Psycho Fox are planning to go back into the pocket dimension to find Red Star. But Red Star manages to find his way out of the pocket dimension, and as they leave out, Red Star man stays behind saying he has to clean some stuff up. And in the process, we see this. And that was the end of phase one. Now, let's talk about phase two. We opened phase two at Robo Toy Fest as Dagger Boy, Red Star, and BP are rolling through Pasadena to look at the really, really cool stuff they had and so forth and so forth until they realize that Red Star's not acting like himself and he actually goes missing. So it's up to Dagger Boy, BP, Jimmy, and Danny to look for him. When they find Red Star, Red Star is completely acting like a different person. It's as if this dude legit played freaking, um, oh, what was that game with the, um, switching, um, uh, personalities? No, screw that. It's not that. He's talking about how, uh, Dagger Boy never respected him as a, 
uh, as an interviewer, never respected him as a man, and never respected him, him as a co-worker and stuff like that, which is all BS. And you're probably wondering, where was Psycho Fox and Jen Pink? Well, they both had midterms. They were not going to Robo Toy Fest until they, their midterms were done. So as Red Star finishes his monologue, he transforms to a new a new monster or something like that. He tra he transforms into something completely different. He transforms into Shadow Slayer, carrying two swords that look like some straight up attack on Titan. I go lie, I don't, we don't know where Shadow Slayer got these swords, but they're actually pretty dope. But that's neither here nor there. In the in the battle, we find out that that Dagger Boy has now been a brainwash. In fact. Heck, the book that Red Star had was not just a regular journal. It was a journal with six different words. Turtle Pizza, Mega Force, um, Troy, or what was his name? Yeah, Troy, um, uh, uh and some Overdrive, and some other words. And they pretty much, they pretty much... Dagger Boy got Winter Soldier, and you find out that Dagger Boy was Shadow Dagger the entire time, brainwashed by this Emperor that they keep mentioning, named Emperor Zombra. In the melee, Danny and Jimmy get critically hurt, and as BP is trying to calm Shadow Slayer down and try to turn him back into Red Star, well, this happened. BP was killed by Shadow Slayer, and in order to put him out of his misery, Jimmy decided to do the one thing he never thought he could do, and that was take his friend's life in order to put him out of his misery. Somehow, some way, Psycho Fox and Jen both got toward what happened at Robo Toy Fest, and well, these were their reactions. Yeah. <gasps> no, 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 no. After BP's memorial service, Psycho Fox and Jen Pink realized that they had to continue to do the show, even if their friends were now gone. But in the midst of continuing the comic book, Shadow Slayer breaks in, attacks, and kills one of the secu their security guard, and then takes Jen Pink back into the pocket dimension. A few weeks later, Shadow Dagger and Shadow Slayer leave a message to Psycho Fox that in order for him to get Jen Pink back, he would have to face one of them and Shadow Slayer nominated himself to fight Psycho Fox. After getting this message, he then calls a now broken Danny because of the fact that he felt like it was his fault that PP was killed. So even though Jimmy tell, told him time and time again that it was not his fault and that yes, Dagger Boy was Shadow Dagger the entire time and, Sha and Red Star was brainwashed by Shadow Slayer and whoever this Emperor Zombra guy is, is going to pay. However, Psycho Fox tells him everything that's going on. Jen being kidnapped, the security guard dead, and the fact that they were able to trace Psycho Fox's signature somehow. We don't know why he has a signature, but we'll find out at some point. Back into the pocket dimension. So, even if Psycho Fox wanted to go back to the pocket dimension, they would still kill Jen because they would know that he is coming for her. So he tells him that he would have to go to the pocket dimension and save Jen while he tries to hold old Shadow Dagger off, as well as Shadow Slayer. Realizing that this is his way of redeeming himself and redeeming what he believed was his fault, Danny decides to go into the pocket dimension to look for Jen. Being in the pocket dimension and speaking to Jen, Jen manages 
to get out of the pocket dimension. She manages to get out of being captive by Shadow Dagger and Shadow Slayer and manages to find some type of abandoned warehouse in the in the outskirts of the pocket dimension and is there for God knows how long. Months, weeks, we don't know because there is no such thing as time in the pocket dimension. She manages to find her way out through looking through a mirror or some kind or actually no it wasn't a mirror she manages to leave after finding what appears to be a portal back into our world and tries to go looking for psycho Fo fox psycho fox actually not knowing that jen is back and then we get this cool montage of psycho fox working out and telling himself that he may realize that he may not survive this fight but he says this night after night Day by day, I find myself wondering if it was all worth fighting for. And then you see this really cool Rocky slash Creed montage of Psycho Fox training and, and preparing himself you know, in every way, shape, and form to fight Shadow Slayer. And that was the end. That is. Oh, wait. That is not the end. Danny goes into the pocket dimension looking for Jen and can't find her until he finds a what appears to be a pin of some sort. A pin. Oh man, I dropped it. Oh well. A pin that looks like like a lightning bolt. We don't know where the pin has come from, but it might have some symbolic meaning to it. And might lead them more and more on who Emperor Zomber is. And then we are now into the final video of phase two uh, of phase two. And you have now been recapping everything that has happened in the Pocket Dimension series. With that being said, I hope for you guys enjoyed that small little recap, and hopefully you enjoy you didn't enjoy all the stuttering I did. Don't worry about it. But once again, guys, thank you so so much for following us throughout this entire journey. So now that you now you've officially been caught up on everything related to the Pocket Dimension series, Diary Four will be releasing next week as I am recording this. So get ready. As you're, if you're wondering, we'll be putting up. The rest of phase two, yes. If you're wondering where we put up phase one, not really, because of the fact that uh, it's really hard to uh, edit all that stuff. But we managed to get phase two, and I actually got the chance to do to do reduxes to them. So they will be up up right after Diary Four of Phase Two. So that being said, well, I could end it there, but I'm not going to. Actually, you don't have to wait until the the trailer for uh, Diary 4, because the, the trailer to Diary 4 is going to play for you guys right about now.